Good evening from New York. I'm Selwyn Collins, your host of CWS Journeys. The beautiful lady on the other side of the screen is Miss Jill Marie Battery. She graduated from Navy uh, School with a degree in dance and is an award-winning dance and choreographer of theater, television, and film. She is an original cast member of the Tony Award-winning Broadway Music Theater, where, she's also, where she was also the dance captain for its Broadway International and National Tours. Miss Valerie is a recipient of the Fred Adidel Astaire Award for Outstanding Excellence on Stage and of the ACCA Advisory Committee of Chorus Actors Equity Award for Outstanding Broadway Cast. Jill, welcome to CWS. Thank you, CWS, for having me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just going to go right into it. When those close to you describe you, what do you usually agree with? I agree with fun, uh -huh. happy, patient, which is a huge choice. Um, I love nature um, and people, just genuinely love people, yeah. Award-winning um, dance and choreographer of theater, television, and film. Which of these three mediums is your favorite? Mm -hmm. I would have to say theater. Uh, what? Theater, because it is so in the moment with the audience, you know, um, everything is happening live for the performer and for the audience as well. So we're, we are having this um, very um, intimate connection in the same space. Do you remember your first theater experience? Yes. Yes and no. Yes, because I was four years old and my mom has pictures of me on stage. Um, but uh, I, do, I do remember that um, I felt so alive. I felt alive and I felt connected with the audience. I forgot about the other little girls in back of me. God bless them. But I was all about just this is the stage, the energy that was given back from the audience and um, yeah just just sharing that so right shyness uh, what can you remember if you were ever shy on stage do you remember ever feeling shy on stage no why why do you think that is i maybe it's like an alter ego thing uh -huh. where i just feel you know uninhibited on stage because I know that that is a safe place that allows you just to be whomever or whatever it is that you, you've come to be on stage. You know, um, <clears throat> sometimes I, I jump forward mm -hmm. and then I act back, but uh, you've given me an opportunity here. It is a question I ask almost every performer that I know this particular question uh, from Lauren, your good friend, the uh, the whole, sorry, um, Nicole the Weaver. Mm -hmm. When you step on stage and you're waiting for your cue, and then the lights and you get your cue and the music or whatever it is, is that the same Jill that is sitting in front of us or is there a transformation? Is that she becomes someone else? It's a good question. It's, it's the same to a degree. I would have to say the difference is I know that, again, I have that freedom <laughs> of, of being as big and, and loud and you know, whatever the character permits mm -hmm. you know, for me to be. Um, of course, you can be that in real life, you know. <laughs> but sometimes you gotta like pull back just a little bit, you know, um, for for sake of whoever you know you 
you're around and, and whatever the situation um, may be. But I think, uh, yeah, there's, a, there's a, of course, that genuineness that is me um, that is presented on stage, but then another level of, of freedom that the stage represents because of that safety. You know, when I hear this word freedom, I'm always drawn to it. You know, I, 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 I am especially, and, and you, you've mentioned it a couple of times, so I'm pulled in. Yeah. So I want to go back to this little girl from New Orleans. Okay. All right? Take us back, give us a glimpse of the nine-year-old Jill, and then we go to the 16-year-old Jill. But tell us a little bit about the nine-year-old. The nine-year-old Jill. Um, very energetic. I think at that time I was into gymnastics as well as dance. Um, love to perform for my family. <laughs> Whenever we had family functions, my mom would make me laugh because she's like, you know, Jill, show them your, your latest dance or whatnot. And I was like, yeah, okay, sure, let's do it. So I was always ready to, you know, be the entertainment uh, for the family and family functions. Um, I think at that time I started, you know, no, I wasn't choreographing for other people yet. Mm. At that time I was just dancing, you know, um, for myself and for the fun of it. Um, but I was definitely one of those kids that liked to get people involved in, um, whatever it was we were doing. I was that kid on the playground that was like, you know, I knew everybody. Mm -hmm. I was in all the little cliques, you know what I mean? I could float from here, I could float from there. But when it came down to it, if it was something that I wanted to do, everybody would come together. So, mm. like a connector in a way. And um, Jill at 15. Jill at 15. 16, sorry. That's, yeah, you know, 15, that's 16. 16. Um, Jill at 16, that's when I was really like, okay, uh, this dance is, this is who I am. Wow. You know, this is definitely who I am. I mean, like, I knew it at a young age, but, you know, when you're 16, you're able to now understand how it fits in your life. And I was choreographing for everybody in the neighborhood. My mom would tell me I had people in the backyard, like, okay, this is the movements that we're going to be doing, five, six, seven, eight. I'd wear all my friends out because <laughs> they were like, okay, Jill, we, we've already, we've done it like 10 times. I'd say, but it's not right. It's not mm -hmm. quite right. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think that's where the, um, the uh, inspiration and drive for seeing the bigger picture came from you know, wanting to make big um, pieces and then putting all the little intricate pieces together from that that bigger... Is it, is it fair if someone were to say you're perfectionist? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you usually very hard on yourself? Ye you know, until recently, <laughs> I would say maybe about... Mm, Five, six months ago, five, six months ago, mm. um, the idea of just surrender and mm. acceptance mm. Um, was re vibrating really strong uh, around me and releasing, releasing. And um, with that came the feeling of, you know, Things are going to be as they are. There's only so much that I can control, which I do understand this, specifically when I'm working with people who are not dancers, you know, um, and, and we have to come up, come up with a piece for them or whatnot. I, I get that if everything is a process and it takes a time, but when you, know, when you apply it to yourself, mm -hmm. it's like, look, you need to have this, you need to be here, you need to fit it, and then the time is going and you need to have, but I'm like, you know, everything works out in its own time. Mm. And everything's always working out for me. So once I accepted that and started to take that idea and put it into practice, 
it's like this whole another level of awareness and softness with myself um, developed. In. Was it a eureka moment for you or was this something that you were feeling for a while, you were toying with it and then uh, there came the acceptance? It was something that has been within me for uh -huh. a long while, a long while and you know, a little smoldering, yeah. smoldering, but I just didn't quite, um, two things, I didn't quite understand how mm. it worked and the accepting of letting, of letting go, mm -hmm. you know, was a little bit like, ah, uh, well, but I want to have, you know, mm -hmm. uh, elements of control, but mm -mm. And so it, once it did happen, yeah. once it did happen to, to get to that eureka moment, it felt like home. It felt like, you know, going back, cycling back to that word freedom, yeah. you know, and, and finding that um, idea within yourself of what is freedom and coming to that place of softness and, and acceptance and, and um, an overwhelming amount of self-love. Um, I've I realized that that freedom is the the um, honoring that light energy mm -hmm. in us, honoring that light force, and not even I'm not going to say not caring because you care to a degree what people think. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> living your life with the joy that you know you have, mm -hmm. and if it translates translates to other people, well and good. If it doesn't, okay. Wow, it's um, almost like a natural high. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I can feel that. Yeah. You, you've been dancing all your life. You've been choreographing. You've been coming up with inspirations and. Uh, I'm going to get into what inspires you just now, but this surrendering, mm -hmm. it brought you many gifts, mm -hmm. like a platter of gifts to mm -hmm. select from. And you mentioned a few just now, you know, this love and this mm -hmm. light and this softness and so on. Mm -hmm. But do you think uh, that it brings you a reservoir of dance moves of, you know, ideas uh, for your choreographies, for your dancing, do you think so? Oh, I know so. You know that? I know so, yeah. Because it's, 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 it's like a stream uh -huh. of uh, inspirations that, you know, pop up and click. I mean, I can't grab my phone fast enough <laughs> to try and like, okay, let me get to the app that lets me write down this idea or this idea. Like I've started wow. just going on, um, my voice memo and be like, okay, so this is this is an idea I have for this. Da, 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 you know, you know, spit it out or whatnot. But yeah, it's it's totally opened up, um, which is funny because it's something that I had wanted again that idea of, of freedom and, and whatnot. But it, it's opened up this well of creativity. You know, it, 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 it's almost as if you're saying, I've had this gift. I have this gift mm. as a child. Mm. Mm. This abundance in me, which mm. I have explored and expressed, yet it said to me that if you think this is a lot, mm -hmm. try surrender. Mm -hmm. I know you have, mm -hmm. and you're smiling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Joy is amazing, isn't it? Yes, it is. Let's go back a little bit. Okay. Tell us about Mom, about your favorite memory of her. And I think I'm zeroing in her because I met her, yes. and she's a bundle of joy, and I think I can understand why you are a little bit the way you are, but mm -hmm. this is not about me, it's about the audience. Tell us a little bit about your experience with her. What about her that, um, what do you think about her dwells in you that is, um, help to mold you into this person you've become, this amazing person you've become, or becoming? My mother's 
undying support. Mm. Yes, she has been able to, you know, see me in in all, you know, my my different journeys, um, and has continually provided me the space to be myself, but yet has given me like, you know, material to, to help me come even closer to who I am. Um, she sends me, you know, little prayers, you know, she'll text me prayers or, um, She'll, you know, call me with just, you know, I'm thinking about you, want to know if everything is okay. But it's, but it's how, it's how and what she brings to me at the times that I need it. It's, it's a very, um, mm -hmm. um, I, I, the word is escaping me right now, but it's, it's a very um, close connection. Mm -hmm. I mean, so much so to whereas I, I could be thinking something and she'll be thinking the same thing. Like whenever, mm -hmm. side note, like like if we were go shopping together, you know, I'll lift up and be like, mom, look at these pants. She's like, oh, but look at these. It's the same pair of pants. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, we, we, we're definitely um, two peas in, in the same pod. Like I, I'm Your favorite memory? Definitely a mother's child. I have quite a few, but one that really sticks out. Uh, we were, yeah, I'm not sure where we were going. We were getting together to go somewhere. We were both looking in the mirror. And I think I had, you know, wanted to borrow her lipstick. I was like, you know, I wear your lipstick. So we're putting on our lipstick and we're both looking. And Selwyn, for a split second, we saw each other in ourselves. We were so, like we it, we were like we had to just you know take a moment. I'm like, did you see that? She's like, yes. Oh my! It was. It's like we saw each other's inner being, but also the way that we're connected. Hmm. It was super, super, super powerful. It was a super powerful moment. I mean, it's so much so to where sometimes we're like, you remember that? moment when we were, you know, getting together in the mirror and I think we had, you know, the same lips, but we, it was like we were each other's twin. Mm -hmm. It was, it was that powerful. How, your dad. Yes. Memories of him? Again, really supportive. Mm. Um, my dad recently passed last year oh uh, and um uh, you know it's it's been a process i mean i don't i don't uh, it's funny i ask my partner all the time like how, how do you how do you mourn someone who you know is so close like he was the first person um that had passed that was you know in my in, intermediate and i always say my best friends are my mother my father and my grandmother I think that's my my three that you know I, I know that I can go to and they have the utmost um, best intention for me and, and you know love for me uh, but as I have been I guess I, I don't know I, I, you know I really wouldn't call it morning I would call it celebrating mm -hmm. because I've been celebrating the memories mm -hmm. you know of him and um, one that really sticks out is he he wanted to instill of course responsibility and money um so i uh, got a what do you call it um newspaper route and i had to wake up really early for that newspaper route anybody who knows me knows <laughs> I'm really not an early, I love early morning, don't get me wrong, six o'clock in the morning, that's a gorgeous time. However, I'm just not up at that time. So I had to get up at the crack of dawn, full papers and throw them out. Well, God bless my dad, he would get up with me. 
I would fold all the papers and whatnot, and then he would drive <laughs> to all the places where I'd have to go, and he would chuck the newspapers oh. out the window for me, and I'd hand him the newspaper, and he'd chuck it out, and I'd hand it to him. So um, he was, he was again, super supportive um, of me and my, my growth, and um, he was a very well-spoken, tall, strong man, you know, mm -hmm. but I think one of his gifts, which is similar to you, is that he was the only male with five sisters. Wow. Five yes. Six. Yeah. yeah. So he wow. was very connected mm. with, you know, his feminine side. Mm -hmm. So, and he was also 20 year Marine. So it's like he had that pride and was very, you know, um, alpha male in, mm -hmm. in his presentation and um, good sports, very athletic. But when it came down to myself or, you know, his, his two other daughters, but primarily me because they're speaking about me, I could call my dad with anything. Like I remember the first time I moved to New York, he was the person that I would be calling 24 seven, like, dad, this is so difficult. And I don't know what I'm, I'm, what I'm gonna do. And I don't know if I'm gonna make it. He's like, you're gonna be all right. You can do this. Um, you're there for a reason. Um, you've come this far. This has been a part of your dream and now you're living it. So you're on the right track. You know, he was someone that I could call for anything. So there's dad, there's mom. You mentioned yeah. grandmother. Yes. I want to ask you um, about mm -hmm. women who have made an impact in your life mm -hmm. from a child growing up. Uh, I, I, I like asking women this question. And you just mentioned it because I grew up with so many sisters. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a connection with women and creativity. Mm, mm. And so I'm curious mm. to know about the women in your life, your grandmother, your mom, whomever, you believe that have made an impact on you. Hmm. One in particular that just hits my spirit strong is a mentor of mine. Uh, her name was Sylvia Turner. Mm. And she was a very prolific woman in my life of moving me closer to my dream, actually moving me in the seat of my dream. I was working at um, Hills Dancewear. It's this um, uh, dance supply store in California. I was going to junior college at the time, just graduated, wasn't quite, you know, sure which direction I wanted to go. So I'm like, okay, let me go to junior college and just get an idea, but I was at a college called IBC and they had just opened up their dance program. So the teacher who was at that, at that uh, college taught every class. So, you know, I'm, I'm taking every class with the same teacher. I mean, God bless her, but it's like, okay. Um, so I'm also, like I said, working at the, the, the dance supply store and in walks Sylvia Turner just regal, beautiful uh, uh, sister. And I sell her some tights. And as I'm ringing her up for the tights, she asked me, so, you know, are you, are you a dancer? I said, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm dancing right now at this particular college. Um, and it's good, but, you know, I, I just don't feel as challenged as, you know, I, I think I could be. She's like, well, you need to check out the dance program at Santa Ana College like okay cool you know that that sounds wonderful she's like and your name is and i was like and, you know, told her my name selwyn about a week later my boss at hills dancewear comes up to me and was like you've got mail I'm like i've got mail and you're like oh, how do i get mail at the job open it up it is an application for santa Ana college from sylvia turner I brought it home was like, Mom, remember that lovely lady that I met at Hills Dancewear? Da, 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 da? She sent me this, you know, application for the college. So, of course, you know, selling that's a no-brainer. Like, I, I filled that out and went and got a scholarship to go for dance to go to that college. And from there, it was 
onto, you know, basically onto Ailey. I was there for about a year. Wow. And Sylvia, um, at that time I was like, I'm going to uh, UCLA. I figured it out. I'm going to UCLA. They have a World Arts and Cultures program. I love me some Catherine Dunham. I love cultural dance. I love, you know, um, exploring dance as a means of spirituality and communication and you know whatnot. So that's that's where I'm going. That's what I'm doing. She's like, okay, that sounds great. Well, why don't you go to a summer program to boost up your technique? So when you come back, you could, you know, feel really confident about auditioning for UCLA. I was like, all right. Long story short, I ended up auditioning for Ailey's eight-week summer program. And another amazing woman, uh, Denise Jefferson, was the artistic director of the school at that time. And um, I ended up thinking that, okay, I'm just going there for the summer. Mm -mm. They were like, no, you're accepted into the school. Like you were able to stay. How important was that? That was like a full circle from that little nine-year-old Jill that we mentioned. Because uh -huh. I was like this, watching fame, like every day, like, I want to go to that school. I want to do something like that. Mom, Dad, I want to go to fame. I want to go to that school. So it was like a full circle in the sense that that little dream that I had mm -hmm. is now a complete reality and you're moving to New York City, which is another place that I've, you know, dreamed about. You know, I've, 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 I used to dream about um, studio spaces with windows where you can see out and to see other buildings. But I, I didn't know at that time that, oh, that was actually New York City that you were yeah. dreaming about. And, and now you're, you're going. So yeah, Sylvia Turner, what surprised so, you the most about New York? Honestly, <laughs> how filthy it was. I'm coming from California, so it's like you get a ticket if you litter. So when I came to New York and people were like, wah, 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 and just throwing you know, their stuff, I was like, what? Oh my gosh, I just, okay, wow. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one of the things that shocked me. The most was like. Oh, I have to ask okay. you this, and then we take a quick break. Okay. What are most people surprised to learn about you when they get to know you? That I am shy. Mm. Yeah. They're like, "What? You just you talk to people? You da 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 da? You could do it?" I'm like, mm -hmm. "Let's take a break."